What's up guys? I thought you had a great uh, campfire last night. I'd love to get up there and talk to all you guys and you know be there this morning. Sorry I couldn't be there. Um, but just to recap everything a lot of you guys said, which was very accurate, I can tell you that, you know, being 13 years removed from the Double Art football program, um, it's nice to come back and see that the same type of ethics, morals, and values, and brotherhood, and camaraderie is all still there and actively being pursued on a daily basis. Um, halfway through my eighth grade year, I was told by my parents I had no other option but to go to a private school, and it came down to either St. Joe's and Metuchen, which didn't have football, so that crossed that school out, um, or Del Barton. And, you know, I was a little bit upset. Actually, I was very upset at first, obviously, leaving all my friends. Uh, the fact that Del Barton didn't have any girls when that was one of my main attractions. Um, you know, I decided Del Barton was the pick. I knew that long term it would have significant benefits. Plus, it had a rich history in football, which is what you know, I really wanted, wanted to do in life. Um, so wound up going to Del Barton, wound up going to the uh, football camp right before freshman season. Freshman season started and I was uh, the backup quarterback. Now, what I didn't tell you is I'm from this little town in central Jersey called Branchburg, which feeds into a team and town you guys may know called Somerville High School. So two weeks ago when Brian Bowers asked me to come help out and you know teach you guys and everything else, it hits a little bit home for me that you guys are opening up with my hometown team that I uh, always wanted to play for and I always wanted to beat. Um, so anyway, back to coming in freshman year, I came in as a quarterback and, sorry I'm driving right now, but I came in as a quarterback and I was the backup quarterback immediately. I didn't get much time freshman season at all. Really didn't see the field that much. Had a couple touchdowns playing backup quarterback when we were blowing kids out. Our freshman team actually only gave up six points our entire freshman year, which was unbelievable. And we actually, uh, one of my best friends fumbled the ball inside our own 10 yard line on a kickoff return and the team wound up scoring. So it wasn't even an offensive touchdown. But anyways, going into my sophomore year, uh, I really wanted to find a way onto the field. I was number four or five on the depth chart at quarterback. And, you know, I'm like, listen, I really want to play, so how am I going to play? And I figured the best way to play or get on the field to get noticed was to move to scout team running back. I'd never played running back before at all. I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, but that's what I did. I wound up getting into scout running back, playing scout receiver, and I tried smoking those guys all day long on defense. I'm sure Coach Beach remembers all that. And freshman year, I probably – you know, thought about transferring and, you know, giving up and trying to go back to my hometown which my parents wouldn't let me, but we actually opened up one of our scrimmages at Baskin Ridge and I was playing running back and it was the first play I got in. It was in the fourth quarter, you know, a couple minutes left in the game and our guard got beat and the linebacker dove in and hit my knee and actually tore my meniscus. So obviously I was down on the ground, I carried off the field and whatnot, and uh, that was on a Friday afternoon, and that Monday I had surgery. So, you know, I had surgery, recovered, they told me I'd be out probably, you know, four to six weeks at minimum, and if you know me, which you guys don't yet, uh, I don't really like taking people's, you know, words as the be-all, end-all. So sophomore JV year we had, you know, just that week I decided that I was gonna, you know, put pads on obviously I wasn't gonna be able to play you know I was playing quarterback for JV but you know running back and receiver on varsity um, my quarterback got hit in the game got knocked out of the game and I was the only backup left so I actually wound up playing in the game a Monday after I had the surgery which they told me about four or six weeks came in first pass through a touchdown um, went on to throw probably for I don't know close to a thousand yards that season uh, as the backup quarterback and then I moved to running back once my quarterback came back and it was just a great experience getting on the field so you know every day in practice my practice were my games that's when I went out and really you know got better played against the starters played against varsity played against some hard-hitting bad guys real bad guys that you know really look to take your head off every single time and you know my job was to not only make them better 
but make the coaches notice who I am, who I was. So it was really interesting how, you know, how that translated into life, into having to make things happen. But, you know, from my sophomore year, didn't see much time varsity. I played at homecoming, a couple snaps, had a couple rushes, and then, uh, you know, really killed it on JV. And then coming into camp junior year, I was awarded the starting position at wide receiver. So I came in as a quarterback, moved around, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, did what I had to do, and then junior year started there and senior year. I went on to play football in college at Fordham University. I had originally committed to Delaware as a preferred walk-on. Delaware actually had just won the national championship, and I figured you know, I wanted to play as you know, top ball as I could, so that's why I'd commit Delaware, and wound up going forward in last minute. And I was told that uh, I have a good, shot, good shot at playing early on in my career. I wouldn't have to redshirt and whatnot, so I did that. The um, thing is, after my freshman season, I didn't play at all. Our uh, our coach got fired the day after our season ended, and a new coach came in, and that coach, you know, brought all his players in, brought kids in from Florida, California, Texas, and made it known that he wasn't going to give my class a shot. Um, and it, it was sad, you know. I was going into my sophomore season at that point, and it was just, you know, it was tough to deal with because it's hard enough playing football, it's hard enough playing college football, it's hard enough staying healthy, but when you have coaches that don't want you to play they don't want you to do well they want to obviously show off you know their recruiting skills and their ability to put players on the field it was tough and uh, my quarterback actually made it to the NFL who came in a year after me a guy by the name of John Skelton played for the Arizona Cardinals for a couple seasons actually uh, beat the Dallas Cowboys I believe on Thanksgiving one year but um, it was interesting because going into my sophomore season I stayed up at school all year and I wound up getting a season-ending injury um, I, was, I worked my way on the special teams. I was actually the pump block guy. I was the field goal holder because, you know, they obviously weren't going to play me at receiver, even though I was smoking guys left and right. Um, I actually uh, got had a season-ending injury. And not to be too vulgar, but uh, the quarterback threw the ball inside when he was supposed to throw it outside. I had to dive over the defensive back, and I landed uh, nuts first on defensive back's cleat. I ruptured my right nut, and I was in the hospital for about a week and a half. And obviously the doctors told me that, you know, I'd never play football again. I said that the risk was too serious. I could obviously, you know, have uh, problems moving forward in life, having kids, having a family, and it's just dangerous for your overall health. Um, needless to say, I rehabbed, came back the following season, worked my way right back onto the field. I was in the mix at wide receivers um, for starting, and I never started. Uh, I played a little bit. I never had any catches. and. Again, I found my way back on the field after I was told it would not be able to work out. Um, but I want to backtrack back to my senior year just to kind of you know, beat the point home. Um, through the first four games of my senior season at Del Barton, I was leading the state of New Jersey in receiving yards. About 100 and something yards a game, a couple touchdowns. And we were playing away one week, and I was a punt returner. Took a punt, caught the ball, was tired, ran out of bounds, dodged a tackle, whatever. And our quarterback called right formation and because I was so tired I wasn't paying attention and the game had just started um, I wound up on the left side instead of the right side so I had to motion over late in the, late in the count and I wound up stalk blocking the the defensive back and our running back got tripped up rolled over my ankle and broke my ankle broke my left ankle now the next week we we're gonna play a team called poly prep which had one of the nation's leading running backs uh, a kid by the name of PJ Hill who went to Wisconsin we were playing them and they were one of our biggest rivals you know actually it was the MSG game of the week which was big back then max preps and all that stuff um, they again told me I'd be out probably six to eight weeks my senior season was probably gonna be done and I didn't miss that game every time I had an opportunity free time I was in our training facilities office icing stem all the stuff that we had back then Tylenol and coach Bowers even uh, made me run around the field a couple times because I could only catch the ball one hand because my foot hurt so bad and it was just interesting that you know as much as people want to hold you down hold you back be conservative that if you put your mind to something you're gonna defy all the odds and we're gonna hop back to my college career um, I did finish the season out with at that bar in my senior year had about 900 receiving yards seven touchdowns never missed a game um, and you know, things didn't work out the best way because I remember my last memory at Del Barton football was 
going in as a favorite in the playoffs and losing to Gloucester Catholic by a lot. We lost by like almost 30 points at Del Barton. And I remember crying, just like you guys had said last night, you remember seniors crying last year, and I'll never forget that moment. And even though I was fortunate enough to be able to play on, play Division I college football, one AA college football, whatever you want to call it, um, it just wasn't the same. And since then, it hasn't been the same. Obviously, my career at Fordham wasn't prosperous. It wasn't, you know, anything to write home about at all. We did win a Patriot League championship, but faced a ton of adversity. You know, once a coach comes, new coach comes in and brings his players in and makes it known that you're not one of his guys, it's easy to quit. It's easy to give up. You know, my dad always instilled in me that if you start something, you have to finish something. And I tried my best to, you know, catch a ball, catch a touchdown, get in the field. But, you know, what? I made the best of it. I still played played special teams and you know like I said I was actually fortunate because my practices were my games even even in college you go out there we play against guys that were really good we had a guy in the Packers training camp we had you know my safety started uh, for the New Orleans Saints for the Detroit Lions played for the Dolphins the kid at Issa Abdul Kudus so I played with NFL caliber players I just never got my opportunity never got my chance but you know it definitely prope propelled me forward into the real world by being able to, you know, go out there and face adversity and realize that, you know, football is what really mattered. Now when we're in the real world and we're facing adversity, we're dealing with managers, bosses, colleagues, you name it. And, uh, you know, it just really teaches you the ability to, you know, operate as a team player, um, never give up and really focus in on what you want to do in life. Um, but the biggest thing is the mental toughness part of it. And you guys touched on it. You guys just busted your butt all week. And you guys were able to do things that obviously other people weren't going to do. And I think uh, Will said last night something along the lines of, you had 36 guys that came in freshman season. You guys are down to 12, 12 or 13 seniors. So, you know, listen, it's not for everybody, but neither is the real world. They say that if you make it into the top 1% in the real world, you've made it. You know, think about it. You, know, you guys are in high school and you already had, let's just call it 65 or 70 percent of the kids not even stick with football. So stick with it, persevere. I wish you guys the best luck this season. I'm going to be there every opportunity and chance I can get. Um, as far as my biggest fears go, I guess my biggest fears at this point in life are going to be uh, not trying to be the best role model I can for kids like yourself, young men like yourself, because I'm old at 31, but I'm still young at heart. And I just want to set a positive example for you guys. I want to be able to show you what's possible when you put your mind to something. And I also want to be able to teach you things that a lot of people can't teach you about. Um, and I have all those secrets. But I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Wish you guys the best of luck. Um, go kick ass at the scrimmage on Monday. And remember, you know, there's always somebody watching you. There's always somebody that's wanting you to do better than you probably even want to do yourself. And uh, Please make it a target to go out there and kick Somerville's ass. I can't wait to be at that game on the sideline with you guys. You guys are going to have the opportunity to play uh, a team that I was planning on scoring a lot of touchdowns for, but I never got the opportunity to. But like I said, it's nice seeing you guys. You guys have something special for sure. Um, Coach Bowers, Coach Beach, those two guys were a big impact on my life. I'm happy to see that they're still there uh, making an impact on yours. So that's it. Let's get in the game and uh, let's score some touchdowns and pitch up some wins.